Hi guys! Happy Valentine's! Today we are making a DIY strawberry bouquet. It is so simple and elegant, yet easy to make as a thoughtful gift or a classic item to offer for Valentine's Day on your small business menu. From dipping and decorating the strawberries to assembling the bouquet, we're doing it all step by step. And it's a whole lot of fun because what's better than berries, chocolate, and flowers? So be sure to keep on watching! To create a beautiful bouquet, I recommend up to two dozen strawberries, which is 24. Just make sure you have a few extra cartons on hand. Sometimes it's a struggle finding the perfect berries, especially this time of year. And you want to select ones that are around the same size and consistent in shape for a nice presentation. It is important that you wash and dry them right before you are ready to dip so they don't get mushy and they need to be at room temperature. Here I'm inserting my wooden skewers in the center of wood going directly through the middle where that thick stem is and push as far as you can go without going through the other side. For reference, mine are 3 millimeters thick and 10 inches long. You don't want to use a candy apple stick or anything too thick to prevent breaking your strawberries. For the fun part, I'm using candy melts from the craft store. You can choose any flavors or colors that you like. The strawberries and cream flavor is amazing, by the way. I find the easiest method to melt these while achieving the smoothest coating on your strawberries are to add four tablespoons of Paramount Crystals or Easy Thins to each bag of melts. These are thinning agents that help the chocolate reach dipping consistency. Then I switch on the pot to the highest setting and mix to combine by stirring continuously. It is important to add the melts and thinning agents at the beginning of the melting process. That way everything melts together thoroughly and allows the chunks to fully dissolve. Once the chocolate is about three quarters of the way melted, turn the switch down to the second setting and continue stirring until the chocolate is completely melted and reaches 110 degrees. As you can see, I melted two colors at once. In between stirring each one, I'm checking the temperature and the chocolate will be super smooth and fluid at 110 degrees. Now that the temperature has reached 110, I remove the chocolate from the pot and let it sit on the counter until it drops to 95 degrees and we are all ready to start dipping. First, grab all the leaves to hold them back and dip straight in until the chocolate comes to the top of the strawberry. Then shake the excess off and if you see some of the skin or seeds peeking through, quickly give the berry another dip and after shaking again, instead of wiping the back of the berry and drying on parchment paper, you want to quickly flip the berry and place upright to dry in a block of styrofoam or floral foam. Doing this keeps the berries looking their absolute best for the bouquet like fully bloomed flowers. Whenever you are dipping a new berry, be sure to settle out the chocolate and it is at that great dipping consistency that you'll love. Recently, I received some questions from you guys about thinning with oil. I don't recommend using oil as a thinning agent with the craft store melt because it tends to soften the chocolate and doesn't harden and dwell into that nice snap on your berries and it may also cause the chocolate to sweat later on. We definitely don't want our bouquet to sweat. I also went ahead and dipped my other berries into the strawberries and cream flavor. It is a ballet pink shade as well as the milk chocolate. You can dip as many of each color as you want to make the assortment of 24 berries. 
If you have used candy melts before, you may have noticed the milk chocolate is slightly more fluid and the easiest to dip, and the hot pink colored melts are one of the thickest for some reason. When melting those, you can mix in an extra tablespoon of the thinning agent, which is five tablespoons of crystals instead of the four. Another flavor that was very delicious was the cheesecake. They have a slight ivory color to them, similar to a white rose. Being that this is a lighter color, it can appear a bit sheer. So if you want to make it more opaque, you can coat this color and any light pink like the strawberries and cream with an extra dip. I don't know what was going on today. There were some seeds in my chocolate. If you look a little closer, stay away from my strawberry. While the berry is still wet, I'm dressing it up by sprinkling on these gorgeous white sugar pearl sprinkles. Definitely sprinkle them on with your fingers instead of a spoon. The sprinkles are quite heavy and shoveling them on can disturb the coating while it's drying underneath. You have so much more control sprinkling with your fingers. This design is so simple yet very unique. It looks like I have a lot of white berries here. That's because some of them are going to be painted gold as well. And since the pearl berry was heavy, I ended up moving it to its own separate block of floral foam to give it more support. It is time to get decorating. Here, I'm showing you how to create a Valentine marble berry. On top of the cheesecake chocolate, I'm piping zigzags vertically and horizontally with a plastic squeeze bottle or you can use a piping bag and going over the pink with some red and more pink. When dipping the berry inside, I start at the corners and twist as I come up for that marbled effect. When I first started doing marbled berries, I would dip in the center first, but you end up wasting more colors since it spreads out into a blob. You get so much more out of the chocolate by making use out of the corners. And there we have our marble berries to add a pop of color to the bouquet. A little bit of shimmer goes a long way, so I have red, gold, pearl, and pink edible luster dust to brush on. Instead of leaving the berries matte, my favorite way to apply the luster dust is with a large, dense dusting brush similar to a kabuki brush. I'm tapping the brush into the Sugar Art Pearl Dust, which I will link in the description box below. I brush on more as needed as I work my way around. It is best not to rub too hard or it will take some of the luster off. That subtle pearl shimmer makes the berry stand out and look so fabulous and elegant. I also want to show you the difference when applying this hot pink luster with a much smaller brush. The application is streaky and doesn't go on as evenly. Although it is still pretty, I prefer to go with the Kabuki style brush which I have available in my Amazon store. This hot pink definitely reminds me of a Barbie inspired berry. Next, on the strawberries and cream, I'm brushing on a pearly pink luster dust and finishing the red berries with a red luster dust. This one has a really cool pink undertone to it that is perfect for Valentine's instead of using a holiday Christmas red. Next, we all love a gold berry and to mix the edible paint, I'm dropping in baby spoonful amounts of Everclear Vodka as needed into the gold luster dust and giving that a mix. Too much of the vodka will make your paint too loose and it will be difficult to paint your berry. Take a little at a time and paint until the entire berry is coated, working as quickly as possible since the vodka does evaporate. The gold is so stunning and complements the glow on the pearly berries. Before we begin to drizzle, the drizzle consistency is much different from the dipping consistency earlier. We need to microwave the melts without any thinning agents in 30 second intervals until the melts are 115 degrees and put the chocolate into a plastic squeeze bottle or sandwich bag, drizzling back and forth, then flip the berry to the other side for another drizzle. It creates a swirled effect for the bouquet, similar to a drizzle on a cake pop. 
This consistency also works for piping designs. In a textured decorating bag, I'm piping the loops across on the strawberry, slowly allowing the chocolate to fall as I got it. I didn't end up using these since I piped them upside down. Whoops! They will be flipped over in the bouquet, but I wanted to show you in case you wanted to try your own. Just keep in mind to hold the berry the other way as you pipe, not like I did. I drizzled all the berries I showed so far with these strawberries and cream melts. Another way to switch up your drizzles are to sprinkle on a coarse sanding sugar right after drizzling. I drizzle one side and sprinkle it immediately before drizzling the other. If you wait until both sides are done, it won't stick on. These designs are the red luster berry with white drizzle and gold sanding sugar and the strawberries and cream luster berry with white drizzle and a white sanding sugar. This one is so soft and delicate to go along with the light pink roses. On a white pearl berry, I really like doing the strawberries and cream drizzle with the gold sanding sugar and I finished with a classic milk chocolate berry and a light pink drizzle. I included lots of different colored combinations to give you some Valentine berry inspiration. Last but not least are the gold leaf berries. I ripped them up into smaller pieces and have the clear vodka with a small brush to pick up a piece and spread it around. Just make sure the gold leaf you purchase specifies that it is FDA approved, some of them are not. The gold leaf clings to the strawberries as you press over the edges. This gold leaf has a little bit of static and clings to everything, but you will get the hang of working with it. We're just a few steps away from assembling our bouquet. Once all the strawberries are decorated, all you are going to need are a few materials, which are approximately one dozen fabric roses. I found these pretty pink and white ones from Michael's Craft Store, as well as your choice of a round or square box. I ended up going with the round, it's actually from Amazon. It appears a lighter pink in person and measures about 6 by 4 inches, but it came with flowers inside, which I removed. And I wrapped my box with a sheer gold ribbon. It's perfect to match the color scheme of the berries. To size and insert the floral foam for your box, push two halves together and line it up with the box face down. Then push to trace the edges to make a template and cut with a knife. Before placing the floral foam in the box, you may need to pack the bottom with some plastic bags since the box is a bit deep. Then go ahead and insert the floral foam. To prepare the roses for the box, take a clipper to clip off the leaves. Although they are pretty, the leaves may get in the way and cover the strawberries. My roses are a bit large since that's all I could find, so I gently remove the outer layer of petals to size them down. And all that's left is putting the arrangement together. Start by choosing the strawberry that you want to go in the middle and angle the skewers when sticking them into the floral foam, alternating with one of the roses after every few berries. Have your clippers handy on the side to trim the skewers if needed. Guys, the great thing about this is if you don't like something, you can always take it out and rearrange it to your liking. And for some reason you experience trouble sticking the rose in the floral foam, check that there's no thorns on the stems that need to be trimmed or they will get stuck. It's not as complicated as it seems, just a matter of angling and filling out the box. I ended up using 8 roses and 21 strawberries since my roses were a bit more full. If yours are the standard size, you will probably use up to the 1 dozen roses and the full 2 dozen berries. Take one last look to see if the back needs anything else. For the last finishing touches, I fill the empty spaces with tool. This one comes in pre-cut strips, and I cut the strips into 5 inch squares. It is a bit sheer and hard to see what I'm doing. Basically, I layered 3 of the squares together and folded that square into a triangle 2 times to create a cone like shape. Then I'm taking a skewer to push it where I want it to go and repeat doing that all around to look like a tutu on a ballerina. 
and there we have our spectacular strawberry bouquet all ready for Valentine's Day. I hope you enjoyed this video and it inspired you to create your own for family or friends. Hit the thumbs up button if you did. It's Christina here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.